What is up everybody? Your boy is back on the grind on a Monday grind. One more time your boy is back at it again and yes it is a Monday and why in the heck am I making a video on a Monday? That is because I am not working today. Uh, we got hit with snow really hard this weekend and today it's raining so that's good. That means the temperatures are up and it's melting the snow but because of that I wasn't able to train Saturday, Sunday, and today because of all the snow. Yesterday was a day of me shoveling, man. I had to shovel our whole uh, driveway and kind of make a pathway for my clients to get here because I train all my clients here at my makeshift facility that I have in the back. I actually will turn the camera around and show you guys kind of uh, what I'm talking about and you'll see all the snow around the area that I uh, have them work out at. But with all that being said, because I and not working today, I will have time to work on the LSA Caprice, you guys, LSA Caprice. So that's really good because that gives me an extra day to hopefully, hopefully now, I was thinking about this yesterday, I might be able to start this car this weekend. I'm not sure, but I might be able to because this gives me an extra day to work on it. So today I thought that I would attack some of the wiring and maybe I'll get 80, 90% of it done, maybe 100% of it done. So uh, most of the wiring is actually already done. I just have to be able to route the wires the way I want them. I think I have to extend a couple wires. So, you know, that takes time, soldering and things like that. I also have to wire in the heat exchanger pump and make sure that's uh, good and wired in. And I think I probably have to put that on a 12 volt keyed source. So that way the pump is not running all the time. So I have to figure that out. So uh, needless to say, there's a lot of things that I have still uh, to get this thing started and rolling, but uh, today will definitely help because it gives me that extra day to work on it. So if you guys are new to the channel, definitely think about subscribing to you guys. Uh, also leave a comment, you guys, leave a comment at some point during this video. Again, that helps the channel grow. I don't care if it's a dot. I don't care if you leave a period. Yes, just a period, a dot on the comments. Just leave something, you guys. Uh, even if you don't uh, comment a lot or you're not really, really active with the page, uh, but you like the video, that's fine as well. But anyways, I don't wanna sit here and ramble. Uh, wiring videos can tend to be a little bit boring, so I won't show every single thing as far as me actually soldering the wires and things like that, but I will show you guys what I'm doing, how I'm wiring the wires, and uh, what it takes uh, to you know complete the swap. So anyways, y'all ready? Let's get it. So yeah, you guys, like I said, I just wanted to show you real quick. Uh, that's all the snow that I shoveled. I'm gonna open this here real quick. So that's all the snow that I shoveled yesterday. Uh, this is the pathway, kind of goes out back towards my gate uh, that I had to make towards the area where I train people. So I train people under there, as you guys can see. Uh, you guys can probably kind of see the turf and all that back there. So I have the turf. Uh, and all the equipment and stuff is hiding behind that gray area. So that's actually where I train my clients here outside. Uh, per the state guidelines and COVID, we have to be outside and with a, we can have a, a covered structure, but one side of it has to be open uh, for airflow. But man, look at all that snow. I mean, look at that. All right, YouTube fam, I am back in the garage and we are next to the LSA Caprice. Oh man, that sounds good, LSA Caprice. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I'm actually going to start attacking some of the wiring here as uh, mentioned earlier. But one thing I also wanted to mention here um, is <clears throat> that I'm having no tolerance for in 2021. And I usually try to keep my, my channel positive and I usually try to stay positive myself. This just kind of trigger this, let me back up here. This just kind of triggered something when I read a comment the other day and I just deleted the dude, I blocked him. I don't even know who he is. Uh, I don't even know if he's ever looked at my channel before or not, but he has something to say about the way I talk. I was going to comment back. You know, there's that side of you that wants to comment back and it was just a negative comment. It wasn't needed. Like, why are you even commenting? Just don't come to my channel anymore. Okay. You don't like the way I talk? Don't come to my channel anymore. But so I just, I actually commented. Then I thought about it. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to block his ass. Excuse my French. So I just blocked him. But you know, I've done that a couple of times with uh, people. Just, I just don't understand it, man. I, I don't understand why somebody would have to leave a negative comment in regards to the way 
a certain person is doing something to their own, their own particular car, let them do it. Now, if it's something that, that you see that probably shouldn't be done as far as like, you know, like if, if I'm mounting the fuel rail wrong or something like that, and you know that it's going to be uh, a bad situation, then definitely be like, yo, you know, just leave a constructive comment. It's like, yo, that's not going to work. Um, you're hooking it up wrong, this and that, you know, but be, be cool about it. You don't have to, you don't have to degrade or, or, or be, uh, uh, for a lesser of a better term an ass about it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I'm all for constructive criticism. I'm all for variety and people having their own opinions about things and, and showing me different ways that I can do stuff for my own car. But when you uh, come in and just be negative, and even if it's off topic, like something as far as not even related to the car, like the way I talk, like, why would you even do that? I don't, I don't understand it. So anyways, I'm having no tolerance for that kind of stuff, especially on this channel. This is a place where I want people to come learn i learn you guys learn it's just a do-it-yourself type of channel i'm learning i'm no guru i'm no mechanic i can learn so if you guys have something that you would like to share with me or you see something that i'm doing wrong definitely let me know but don't be an ass about it all right that's just pretty much it because this is the way i see it and i'm gonna leave it right here if you go to a car show and and the owner is standing right next to the car and let's just say you don't like his intake manifold or something that he did on the car. You're not going to confront him and tell him, right? You're not, you're not going to confront him and say, hey, man, nice car, but I hate your intake. It's, it's dumb. You know, take it off. You know, you're not going to do that. So why do that here? I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. I mean, we have a lot of keyboard warriors, so to speak, keyboard warriors that are, that are fine and, and feel comfortable behind the keyboard, but they would never say anything to your face. So... With that being said, don't do that here. Cool? 2021, all positive. Let's get after it. All right, y'all. Now that my rant is over, let's get to it. Wiring. It is going down and, and some odds and ends where I have to still tidy up the hoses, clamps, things like that. But wiring. So this is what's going down today. All this wiring that you see right here, it is pretty much all uh, ran and lengthened uh, in order to fit. Now... What I have to do is just run it for kind of like its final time to make sure everything is good. And I think I have to extend these wires right here that are going to go to right here. I don't know quite yet, but I think I am going to have to do that. And uh, once this is all kind of ran and everything, then I am going to tape all the wires with, uh, where's this tape at? I bought this specific tape right here. It is, I don't even, Tessa, I think that's the brand, but I think it's actually uh, was uh, made for BMW uh, for their wiring harnesses, I think, because every time I've, I look them up, they always refer to BMWs. And what it is, is it's a, I don't know if this is like a cloth style tape or some sort, but uh, it holds up to heat pretty good. And it also, it's a little bit better than your normal uh, electrical style tape. And it's not as, it doesn't leave that sticky residue. So this is why I, I like this. It's actually the same stuff right here. And if you're if you ever want to unpeel this tape, uh, it'll just come right off. So this is why I like it, and it withholds heat a little bit better uh, again than your normal electrical tape. And so that's why I like it. So that's what I'm going to wrap the rest of my wires with. And then I am going to put. Let me see if I can grab a bag. This stuff on it right here. This is Alex Tech Split Sleeving. I got it from Amazon. Uh, in the past, I've actually had trouble finding this. I don't know, maybe it's just become more popular now, but I was able to find it pretty quick on Amazon. But what it is, let me see if I have, oh yes. So what it is, is this style right here. If you guys can see, it's that really nice mesh uh, sleeving or split loom. Uh, it's really, really nice. It looks a, little, a lot better than your normal style, you know, regular uh, loom right there. So, and over time, those with heat, they get brittle and they crack. Uh, but these are, are really nice and, and I really, really wanted to use this style loom. I got every size from like eighth inch all the way to over an inch for anything that I uh, might need as far as a, a sizing. So, 
Yeah, so I'm ready to get that done. And shoot, I'm just ready to get started and plug away at this, you guys. So uh, let's go ahead and get after it. I probably, again, I won't um, I won't show me kind of working on it because, again, like I said, wiring can be tedious and, and not as fun to look at. But I will show you kind of where everything um, is ran, what it goes to, and what I'm thinking about doing. All right, you guys, I am back at it here. Well... Let's just back up. I've been at it for about three hours, and it's, I've been three hours just on this side. Man, that's why wiring just takes so long, and it's so boring to film. Uh, however, it is much needed. So it probably doesn't look like I got a whole lot done, but if you look closely, um, this is all taped up now, and that was kind of a pain the way I have it routed uh, to get the huge uh, roll of tape back there, and it was actually bigger than this. But I got it all done. Now, I left it there because I wasn't quite sure just yet how I wanted to uh, put everything. But I have it kind of temporarily uh, put in place, wires flowing kind of how I want them to, to go. And I think I have it pretty much set. Uh, I just, again, just left it like that just in case I had to take something apart or whatnot or take a wire out or uh, what have you. So anyways, this is kind of what it's looking like. I actually did not have to extend these wires here. And as you can see how I have them routed, what I did is I just uh, de-loomed this a little bit more and I just uh, pulled this wire back to give it a little bit more slack. And then I'm just gonna have it go up this way. Um, again, not really really how i wanted it but since i already have that hose if i never had that hose there then i probably would have just taken the wire up and extended it and put it that way that way it looked a little bit more clean however since that hose is already there um you know there's really no need for me to to uh run this wire out and around i'll probably just end up just uh, zip tying it or something up behind it so you can't really see it obviously i'm gonna put some loom over it so it'll look a little bit better um but that's kind of how i'll have it uh, sitting there again it was no need for me to to run it around plus the wires right here are kind of getting a little bit crammed because i'm trying to hide them under the fuel rail the best that i can it makes it a little bit more challenging too because these i have these injector adapter wires here that adapt into my truck style um plug and then they adapt into the uh, lsa style fuel injector so it makes it a little bit more bulky and tight in there. It doesn't allow me to hide and tuck as much of the wiring as I want to down in there. However, it looks pretty good. And then with the um, with the cover on, then that'll hide a lot of it. So that's that's uh, why I really wanted to use that cover as well. Plus, I think it looks good. Uh, for a moment, I thought that I was going to have to get another map uh, sensor pigtail. Uh, however, I ended up finding it in my uh, package of wiring. So that was good. And again, I'll clean all this up uh, back there. I don't. I was going to actually put some of the split loom, the nice split loom, on a lot of those wires, but you know, you're not going to be able to see them once I kind of tuck them down in there. Uh, you won't be able to see them, so uh, it's probably better that I put or leave that style loom on them back there, since there's going to be a lot of heat back there from the engine, and since you're not going to see it anyway. I'll just go ahead and leave it as is, and then uh, all the wires that are showing, I'll put the nice. Uh, 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 split loom sleeving on that as well. So that is pretty much how it's looking. I did have to extend one wire though, uh, which is this one. This is my uh, main kind of power wire that comes from my original harness. Uh, I the uh, the old one. If you remember from our previous videos back, uh, this nut actually came loose, and then I didn't know it though, but it was uh, arcing a little bit, and I'm glad it didn't catch fire or anything. But uh, it ended up charring this. Uh, terminal right here so and then when i cut it off i found out that it was getting corroded anyway so what i did is cut it back um a little ways and i had this nice uh brand new wire here that i already had a terminal on i was using it probably for something else or for uh, like a tester wire so i ended up just cutting it back and then uh ended up being some good good wire back here so i cut it back and uh started it back together and then that's that so uh, that's pretty much it. And this is just all just this one side. I'll probably go ahead and attack the other side. The other side should be a lot more simpler. Should be, fingers crossed. As you can see, the wires over here, if you guys can see, are pretty much ran for the most part. 
all I have to do is um, is just put them in the uh, injectors and call it good. So what I'll do with these is what I did with the other ones. This is what was on the other side too. These are the um, adapters that came with the kit. So what I'll probably do again, like I did the other side, is just cut these off, put my nice split loom on, and then uh, go ahead and just uh, plug them in and uh, put them kind of in their final resting place. And then I'll go ahead and tape, see how this is taped with that nice tape that I use. I'll probably go ahead and tape uh, down as far as I can and then go ahead and kind of figure out uh, how I want to uh, put or tighten all the wires uh, together in the back to uh, hide them and then get them out the way. The only other two wires that I have are sitting right here. Uh, these wires here that go down uh, to the back of the st or to the uh, starter and then this one is the uh, the uh, crank position sensor uh, wire I believe so I have that one and then where's my other one oh it's sitting right here I think yeah so this is oh, oh my O2 yeah so this is one of my O2 wires so I have to send those down there push those down there and then go ahead and, and hook those up um, I don't know if I'll get to it today but uh, uh, we'll see. I probably won't put the starter in today, but maybe I'll throw that O2 sensor wire down there and go ahead and hook that up. But yeah, y'all, it's coming along. This is this is the part that I wasn't really dreading, but I wasn't looking forward to it, that's for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and do this side. Again, I'll do it off camera, and then I'll, I'll see how I can get all this um, looking uh, where I want it and looking nice, and then uh, and then I'll come back and show you guys. All right, you guys, so after six hours of messing with this thing, maybe even more, it is finally done. I think I have all the wiring done and in place uh, for the most part. Uh, before I started, obviously, I have to triple check just to make sure everything is in and uh, plugged in and whatnot. But look at it, y'all. It is in there and looking nice. So obviously, as you can see, the bulk of nastiness that was there before is gone uh and so that <laughs> is a relief it took me a while to, to tape everything and and run everything how i wanted it it was just really crammed especially over there in the back but i was able to make it all work um i was able to hide the wires kind of like along the uh, fuel rail and then this cover actually uh, hides it really really well i will take this off so you guys can kind of see how i ran everything but yeah, it looks really, really sharp. And you can see the wires kind of run out the back there, but right behind the engine cover. So that's where, uh, those are the um, uh, injector wires. So that's where those are. And I'll, and I'll hide everything and, and make everything kind of a little bit neater. But I'm not trying to hide every single wire, but I am actually trying to make it look like this car came like this uh, from the factory. Um, obviously when you open the hood, it's going to be a little bit of a shock value, but I am trying to, <laughs> I am trying to make it look like it, you know, it belongs in here. So with that, uh, you know, there's going to be wires showing like that junction over there. I have a junction under here. I have that stock harness that goes up and over the, uh, booster like that. So I'm leaving all that. So, uh, you know, the AC lines right there, you know, those have always shown. So I'm leaving that stuff to make it look like you know it's stock this is the original wires and stuff with the car so there's going to be wires that show and i'm okay with that but i'm just trying to make everything you know somewhat nice and you know like it it belonged in here at one point so anyways uh yeah it looks pretty good man i'm, I'm i got really really far today a lot further than i thought that i would uh, let me go ahead and take this off and i can show you guys what it looks like all right so here's where we're at this is what it looks like with it off so uh as you can see now i don't i still don't have everything uh you know tightened up like i want it so when i take the engine cover off i still want it to look all nice and neat and that'll be all you know that'll be a little bit nicer than what it looks like right now but i was able to kind of hide everything under the coils put that nice loom on there and shoot, I think it looks really good, y'all. Uh, again, I'll I'll run these wires and stuff a, a little bit nicer, you know. So, so again, it'll look, you know, pretty pretty nice and and neat for the most part. I was able to kind of clean all that up there for the most part, you know, looking looking real nice. And then over here, kind of the same deal, hiding the 
the injector wires, you know, under the fuel rail somewhat, and they run out the back, you know, here. So that's kind of what it looks like back there. It doesn't look, doesn't look too bad. Um, and then obviously I have to run those wires down to the starter. Yeah, I'm actually liking it. I don't think it turned out too bad, you know, for, for you know, making the original harness work without, you know, stretching it too much and extending too many wires. I think it turned out damn good. And I, I actually like the way that that main part of the uh, the wiring harness runs along there. It's, it looks like it kind of, you know, belongs there. You know, the natural bends there, you know, go along with the nat natural lines and stuff of the uh inner fender well so you know i'm digging that i think that's uh i think that's good you know so and those holes those holes um well you can't see them now but where these uh little um clamps are those holes were already there so i just took the the uh ones from the truck harness that i saved in the truck engine and I put them in there and shoot, man, that turned out really good. This also will be ran a little bit nicer. Uh, actually, those wires here for my stereo, uh, the wire that goes from the battery to the alternator. And I think uh, that's a main power wire there. But uh, that'll kind of run a little bit higher and then to the positive side. So, uh, man, it is coming along, you guys. It is coming along. Definitely get in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about this. I spent some time doing this, but I am happy to get it done. This is probably the longest and most tedious part of it all is wiring, just like any other build. So next up, not tonight because I'm done, but next up, uh, that's my uh, heat exchanger pump uh, harness there. So that should be a fairly uh, easy install. Um, I'll be running it under here. Uh, as you can see, my pump is there and I'll probably just run it along there with those wires right here and it'll probably pop out somewhere right here and then um, I'll be able to tie it in somewhere now I have to hook it up to a, a ignition source like a like a 12 volt keyed on uh, source so I'll have to figure out uh, where I need to pull that from but uh, we'll see so but shoot other than that y'all we are in there I might I might might have this thing running by this weekend because <laughs> i'll have wednesday to work on it all day if needed and then friday also as you guys know that's my day is to work on this so shoot man we we might be there so the next steps again is that wiring harness uh i still gotta put the clamps on i haven't done that yet uh you know getting the pump running with that wiring harness plugging those wires in and filling it up with fluid oh i gotta do the accelerator cable but you know that can be a, a last thing that i can do because i can still have it running without the uh, accelerator cable uh hooked up so i'd rather hear it run first before i hook that up so that's gonna take a little bit of a time to get that done so oh guys get in the comments let me know what you guys think about this so far how does it look did i do a good job did I hide the wires good enough? What is your thoughts on this, y'all? What is your thoughts on this? Let me know what you guys think. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Do all of that good stuff, y'all. Stick with me. Hey, we got this.